Shabbat Shalom and Chanukah Sameach. We have a lot of things for which to thank the Greeks. Among them, democracy, alarm clocks, maps, the beginnings of Western medicine, geometry, I'm not so sure about that one, the screw, the peer jury system, anchors, as the Greeks were the, among the first to take very long sea voyages and they needed a way to stop their boats when they needed to. And one other thing we have the Greeks to thank is umbrellas. Apparently they were the first to pioneer that engineering. This time of year at Hanukkah, we think about the experience under the Seleucid or Assyrian Greek Empire and the <laughs> frightening time that that was for the Jewish people. There are a couple of lessons among so many others that we might be able to take of that relationship that the Jewish people had uh, living in a Greek society. There are many more than these couple, but just a small bites today. Greek philosophy tended to praise aesthetics and appearances. The notion that a person's light or beauty is measured by their outer appearance. It was the externals that primarily mattered. But a Jewish approach compares a human's beauty to that which is inside. What is inside a person is the source of light. The Greeks were the only conquerors of Israel who did not destroy the outer structure of the temple. Instead, they defiled everything that was inside. A message we might take from that is that the inside could be impure, full of dirt, but it was the outside that mattered. The Torah's message, and it is all throughout this parsha, by the way, sermon for another day, but is don't be fooled by appearances. Clothing can be deceiving. It is not the clothes that make the man. As Jacob should have known but didn't, as Joseph would come to learn, as Judah would learn when he mistook his daughter-in-law, failed as she was, for the harlot by the side of the road, and ultimately in the third section of the parsha when Potiphar assumes that Joseph had attempted to sexually violate his wife because she is holding Joseph's garment. This Torah portion and so much of Jewish history reminds us that as much as we are exhorted to make things beautiful, particularly to glorify and beautify mitzvot, we are not an unesthetic religion by any means, but that's not the primary purpose of so many of our rituals. It is supposed to be what is inside that counts. So Torah can have a beautiful mantle and cover, but if the inside is altered in any way, that is what is needed to be fixed. So the Torah teaches us, contrary to Greek notions of outer beauty, don't be fooled by appearances. We miss out, don't we all, on so many wonderful opportunities and maybe don't get to know many great people because we dismiss them based on superficial impressions. But one other lesson that I was delighted to come across, and there are many ways that we could spin all of this, let's be honest. But one other thing I didn't list on my list of things the Greeks gave us for which we should be grateful is of course the Olympics. That appears on a lot of great achievements of the Greeks. 
But let's think about the message of the Olympics in its original form. They are competitive, to put it mildly. And in the Olympics, the one who wins gets the glory. Pretty much everyone else, with all nods to the silver and bronze medal winners, everyone else is pretty much a loser, let's face it. The concept of the Olympics, which was introduced to the world by the Greeks, is one of man's battle to be the best in relation to everyone else. If he makes it, he goes down in the history books. If not, well, better luck next time. But think about the way light is used in the Olympics. And again, we could go a lot of ways with this, but just stay with me on it for today. If you think about the way light is used in the Olympics, the symbol of the Olympics, of course, is the torch. Right? And how does it get into the arena? I, mean, I admit, you know, it always brings a tear to a lot of people's eyes, my own included, when that Olympic torch is passed through cities, sometimes across you know, many, many, many miles, but it's passed from one person to the next. When you're holding the torch, you're standing in a circle of illumination, the center of attention. But the minute you pass that torch to someone else, and we always talk about passing the torch, that's a good thing. But just for today, think about it as a way that the light gets transferred away from the person holding the torch. The minute that he or she passes that torch to someone else, that's it. They're in darkness, standing on the sideline, watching the light go forward. Hanukkah is totally different. The light of the Hanukkah candles is additive. One candle lights the next and then the next, and then the next. And the original candle is not diminished in any way. It's a quintessentially Jewish notion. It should remind us about generosity, the tendency to think that if we give, we won't have, when instead we know the opposite is true. We tend to think that if we give too much of ourselves in a relationship, that we will be lessened, when in fact, most of the time the opposite is true. The more we give, the more we get. And the candle's ability to provide light is actually increased due to its cooperation with its mate. When we find our unique light and share it with the world, Everyone wins. The lights of the Hanukkah menorah, the Hanukkiah, remind us that we are stronger together. It's not a matter of one person standing in the light and everyone else in darkness. This is a cooperative experience in direct contrast to the winner-take-all philosophy of the people under whom we lived thousands of years ago. This holiday, as beautiful as it is aesthetically, is about what's inside, what burns brightly in each of us, and how by being in relationship, we are stronger together. The little Hanukkah candles are not the Olympic torch, but together, they have the power to burn that much more brightly. And for that contrast, I thank the Greeks. And maybe for democracy and an umbrella on a rainy day as well. Let's keep these lights shining brightly and let's share them with full and open heart. Shabbat Shalom and Hanukkah Sameach. Shabbat Shalom.